Hello my friends, it's Manny Rodriguez. Welcome to another episode of Deep True Crime where we explore the ongoing cases that are going on. Things that you might be interested in following if you're into true crime. A lot of people love following this true crime. My goal is to help you be aware of what goes on out there, to help you become smarter out there, and to always help you understand like what are things you should be aware of. You know, even following, even starting this YouTube channel with around deep true crime, I've always been one that believes be aware of your surroundings, but but following a lot of these stories, you know, I'm even learning more and more. And literally, I have a lot of that even goes through in my mind like, okay, you know, be alert here, be alert there. What what could possibly happen here? So that's the goal of my channel is to help you be alert. If that sounds like something you like to follow, make sure you hit that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up, and let YouTube know you're getting some value. This is something you would like to follow. Thank you for joining me today. I'll be right back in 10 seconds. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. We're going to dive right into it. I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for joining. And so here we are 10 months later. 10 months <clears throat> later. So Maya Millet, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Maya Millet, probably Millet. She had been missing for 10 months. She had been missing for about 10 months. And nine or ten months and no arrest had been made until now yesterday the her husband was arrested her husband was arrested for her missing for the vanished mom and the SWAT team completely raided the home and in arresting him he had been on their target for a little while and so he was arrested yesterday morning for the alleged murder of his wife who vanished more than nine months ago, almost 10 months ago. They were all, her, him and the kids, they were gonna go on a camping trip, go hiking or something like that, and they never make the trip, and then mom is missing. And so the SWAT team raided his home this mo uh, Tuesday morning, and so they now they got him. They had about 67 search warrants and interviewed 87 witnesses over the past nine months, getting their side of things. And so the police chief of Chula Vista, Roxana Kennedy, this is what she shared in the press conference. These efforts ultimately generated a variety of pieces of edit evidence that have become clear and overwhelming. Larry Malay. Maya's husband is responsible for Maya's murder and disappearance. Now, I don't think they found their body, though. I don't think they found their body or did they find her dug up. We're about to find out. Maya's older sister pleaded with the public for any assistance in helping locate Maya's remains. And she shares, this is still not the end. We still have a long way to go. We're still asking the public, please help us bring my sister home. I still want to see my sister. I still want her to come home to us. We made a promise to her 11 year old daughter that we would bring her mom home. Let her kids know where their mommy is at. They don't know where she's at. And so Larry is facing charges of murder and illegal possession of an assault weapon. And so he was named a person of interest in this case in July. And they had to get more evidence. That's the thing, when, when you try to get some search warrants and warrants for a person's arrest, they want to get it all. They don't want anything uncovered because if you make a mistake, the trial can be, you can lose the trial if you're a, if you're a prosecuting attorney. You can lose the trial if you don't have all your ducks in a row. Some people are go to trial and are innocent. And some people are found guilty and are innocent. Let's make sure that we're clear on that because people do get wrong, wrongfully convicted. And those are one of the worst things when you are, or when you are connected to a crime and you have nothing, nothing, nothing to do with it. That's one of the worst feelings ever. And so 
So Larry had been withdrawing a whole bunch of money from the bank in the days leading to his arrest. Like he was going to try to make a run for it. You know what I mean? And so they were working hard, hard to get this guy before he goes and goes into MI, he goes missing. And so, so they, they laid out piece by piece all the circumstantial evidence. Remember, it's circumstantial until there's a conviction, right? And so Maya Malay, she was already looking for a divorce attorney. And the husband knew she wanted a divorce. He knew she wanted a divorce. So, you know, he, in his way, he thought he can try to patch it up. He thought he can just fix it up. But truth is, she was she wanted a divorce. And so she sought out advice from a divorce attorney in Facebook groups from mothers in her area right on January 7th. So she they had that. And that's also the same day that she disappeared. And eventually she did make an appointment with a divorce attorney for the following week. And so she had been considering divorce since 2020. But again, she started looking hard on January 7th. And so according to her sister, it's been a buildup for over, over a year. And come December of 2020, she was ready. She was ready. She was ready in December. And then she finally did it. She was ready on January 7th when she really started going for it. And so Larry's behavior, he started becoming erratic he started becoming a little messed up because he was like i'm about to lose my wife and so in the lead up to maya's disappearance he wasn't he wasn't acting himself he was not acting himself in september of 2020 he sent a picture of what appears to be an altar with an image of the couple covered in blood splatter or wax wax surrounded by candle that's a little strange that's definitely a little strange and here's another strange thing he was doing he was contacting spell caster that's right to try to cast spells on maya so that something bad can happen to her so she can stay at home i know isn't that ate up and so he was even asking for her to become incapacitated you know for maybe to be in an accident to have broken bones so she could stay at home that is some homicidal you know ways right there that, that right there is a little messed up that's a little messed up hmm and so larry would you know he was like he wanted to save the family he wanted to but it wasn't happening it wasn't happening so days after she disappeared you know she returned home january 7th and she made an appointment with the divorce attorney and her last message was to her family over Facebook Messenger that night. And in the afternoon of January 7th, Larry sent a really telling text. And he said, I think she wants me to snap and I'm shaking inside ready to snap. And this was on January 7th, the last day anyone seen or heard from her. And so about almost 10 o'clock that night, their time, this is like California time, Neighbors, they said they heard nine loud bang, but authorities were never able to confirm that those were gunshots, okay? And about 30 minutes after those loud bangs, the, the, the children of Larry and Maya, they were, they, were, they were playing in the background, backyard. So people heard them playing back there. And so now January 8th, Larry had moved his black Lexus in the entrance of the garage. Guess why? Because there was no video that can capture whether a body was put in the back of the Lexus right there. So the video, you couldn't see what he was doing. Like he knew he was positioning it a certain way. And so in the morning of January 8th, Larry leaves and he does not return to the house for about 11 hours. Over 11 hours, he does not return to the house. And he leaves his phone behind. You can probably guess why he left his phone behind so that you can't track the GPS. That's pretty obvious. I mean, so he must have been doing his digging or he's been, you know, following true crime stories for a long time and knows that that's an easy way to know where you're going, you know? And what's sad is that he had his four-year-old son with him all day on that January 8th while he was gone. and. He was gone 11 hours, probably for a particular reason. And so January 8th, 
you know, meanwhile, the employer of Maya is calling, right? You know, they're calling Maya, they're calling Larry's dad frantically on January 8th. And so they're like, this is unlike him not to show up at work. So, hmm. So now what did Larry tell the authorities? Why he was gone all day? He went to Solana Beach with his four-year-old all day for 11 hours on the beach. My gosh, if it was sunny, that kid is crisp. And so eventually January 9th, that's when Maya's family reported her missing. And so in the days after the disappearance, Larry told uh, San Diego's KGTV that the couple had their ups and downs over the past year and that they got into an argument the night before Maya vanished. Generally, that was kind of kind of puts a little more eyeballs on you. And so, you know, they have three children together. They have three children and since the mom disappeared, those three children just stayed with Larry. And luckily, they were not home during this arrest. And so, Larry, he had been in a legal battle with Maya's family over visitation rights. And even after a while, he literally stopped working with the cops and the FBI and the family, literally. And so, he said, he claimed that my wife voluntarily left me and our three children. So he's saying, you've heard this before. You've heard this before in other cases if you follow true crime. And you know, he says, we do not know her whereabouts. Her disappearance is considered suspicious or criminal. And the Chula Vista Police Department stated that I am not a suspect and there is no evidence of foul play. This was early on, remind you. This was like shortly after she disappeared. And so, you know, they literally have been going and searching for her week after week. And so now, if you guys know anything, does this sound like any weirdness that you know? Contact 888-508-8477. That's 888-580-8477. And so hopefully we find our body and we know what's going on. And so, my friends, thank you for being a part of this. My apologies if this was a little choppy because I am not getting a great stream here. It looks like it's a little in and out. So my apologies. Definitely be working on that. I don't, I definitely. Anyway, we'll be working on getting better and better. Stick around because if you're a true crime lover, you're gonna wanna subscribe to this channel click on that like button and click on that notification bell. I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for being here today. I look forward to serving you again. Peace.